Check one, two. Go! Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Welcome to Friday. Oh, my goodness. It's I'm glad it's Friday. Oh, man. I hope your morning's been better than mine. I cannot believe I had an, a fantastic interview with a gentleman who's a passive income investor in a big way. And we chatted, had fun, learned all kinds of things, and then hung up and my recorder malfunctioned. So... I just want you to know it was a great conversation, and I apologize for not being able to air it for you because I know all those conversations could be learning tools for someone. Anyway, here we go. We have a podcast number 215. It's a scenario question, and I'm going to try my best. I've confirmed my recorder's working, so we're going to be able to hear this. Here we go. My latest lead estimates her home value to be $100,000. She owes $62,000 and wants 10,000 walk away. My realtor is finding the CMA to be challenging as values here run an average of 40 to 80,000 while some much higher homes run up to 200,000. I'm waiting photos to verify her claim that the kitchen and baths are modernized and the house needs only paint and flooring. Another local resource guesstimates the value to be 110 based solely on this info. Besides getting it under contract yesterday and getting a BPO, where else do you suggest steering this ship? Also, the owner may well be interested in an assumed loan, but will also want some cash up front that I don't have. Okay, let's let's tear this thing apart. She owes sixty-two grand. You agreed to basically buy it for seventy-two, I think, if you go ten thousand walk away plus the exposure that she has. But it's only worth 100 so you're at 72 percent and the, I, i'm thinking the 100 probably isn't as is it's probably arv so we're kind of in the danger zone of value uh, your realtor is challenged call another realtor call two or three four five but congratulations on having the first one and get some multiple price opinions it would be a very very skinny deal or it is a very very skinny deal not saying it's not worth trying to accomplish but it's a skinny deal the thing that concerns me the most is when you say the realtor says that there's comps between 40 and 80 and that she owes 62. So she may owe 100% of value. And so I'd want to know when she borrowed that 62 because that's going to be based upon an appraisal naturally. And I'd like to know how long ago that appraisal was if it was around 2008 that she bought it and, and had that money uh, or borrowed that money. That tells me that it was at the peak of the market, and in fact, the property may not be worth the hundred. The other concern I have for you is the guesstimate that sounds almost like Zillow. And although we use Zillow as one of the seven data sets, we certainly don't use it to uh, confirm value. All we're using it for is to confirm or be in the ballpark when the seller says, hey, it's worth a hundred. You know, could it be worth a hundred? And if you have seven different platforms telling you various numbers and those are all somewhat equal, then you can you can kind of count on a little bit that maybe the seller's in the ballpark. But it's absolutely not an appraisal. It is it's so far from an appraisal. You should not use it to confirm value um, from a purchase perspective. It's just only again. Do I want to fall forward with the conversation of getting it under contract because it's ju it's being just her value is being justified by these seven data sorts sets. So do not do not do not use it as or confirmation of value. Please do not. The other thing is, is that you can't assume the loan. So it's a subject to loan. I'm thinking anyway, what you're thinking of. So it's not an assumed loan. So we want to make sure that we use the correct terminology with the seller. You would be taking the loan subject to not assuming it. So we're not assuming the loan. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, 
typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. You know, in that case, you know, it may mean that, you know, it, it in a case where you're taking a $62,000 subject to loan, assuming that the interest rate's pretty low, because if it's at 8, 9, 10, 12%, it's too high. Trust me, I have a couple like that, and they're way too high. But you got to meet your commitments. When you make a commitment, you have to honor it. So if it's too high, don't do the don't do the subject two. But if it's low enough, you know, a couple, three, four percent, which I, I doubt that it is, but it could be. Then um, then you'd fall forward, and you, that skinny deal could be a nice little sub two resell where you're doing a seller wrap on your side, or junior financing. I'd rather do the seller wrap on the carryback, but. Um, that's a whole different different story and, and different method of making money on this transaction. Now, it concerns me now the, the carpet and the paint. You know, we need to be talking to carpet layers and, and flooring contractors and painters and finding out in advance what it costs per square foot or per square yard in the carpet business. It's always by the yard. And, you know, your painter is going to tell you, you know, is it 75 cents for just painting the walls? Is it a dollar and a quarter to paint walls, cabinets, baseboards kind of thing? So you'll want to know in advance of the costs there. So you can, you can do, let's assume for a second, you have a house, you've got to paint the inside of it. You're going to paint the doors, the, the cabinets, the, the trim and the walls, you know, a buck, buck and a quarter, buck 40, and you've got a thousand square footer. So you should be in and out of that things for, you know, 100, uh, 1400 bucks. Then you've got a thousand square footer, you know, you got nine square feet per yard. And although you don't have carpet in the kitchens and the bathrooms, the way carpet's made because it's 12 feet wide, then you're going to have some waste there. So you're always going to have more yardage than you actually need. So if you divide, you know, nine into the thousand, that's going to tell you how many yards you have. You might need just a hair more, a hair less. And you know, what's carpet cost and carpet pad and um, new tax strip, that kind of thing. So have these numbers in advance. So when someone calls you and says that this is what it needs, then you know that, you know, for five grand, you can be in and out of, in and out of that thing with, with carpet and paint. And that should be a safe number in most occasions. So now you, if you have a $110,000 value ARV, it's really not $100,000 as is. That'd only be a, a $90,000 as is if you have $5,000 in, in work, which makes that deal really skinny now because now you're only looking at you know 72 from 90, you're only looking at an $18,000 spread. And then you've got the costs of buying it and reselling it. And I know those are going to be eight and a quarter percent. So eight and a quarter percent of, of a hundred is another 8,200 bucks. You subtract that from the 18 and um, now you only have a 10. Now 10 is not bad. Most of us don't make $10,000 a month. So, you know, that's not a bad thing, but is that, is the risk worth the $10,000 that you might make? I don't know. So, the biggest thing or the next step I would do on this one is get multiple opinions from realtors on what it would, what the value is prior to getting a BPO because it hasn't, you haven't justified spending the money on a BPO yet. So we we really have to have multiple opinions since your values are so far apart between the 40 and the 200. And um, we, you know, if we're at, if we are at 120, then you're fine. But if you're at 40, yeah, it's a bad day. So find out from other realtors, just call Century 21, call Will Banker, Fred Sands, Prudential, anybody in your local marketplace, sell, tell them you have an address that you want to buy and sell. Ask them to give you a price opinion and they'll most likely do that. I know it's a short podcast, I apologize, um, but a real fast, easy question to answer today. Remember, if you have a question, send it to support at michaelquarles.com and I will get it answered if I can. Don't forget about the coaching program. And it has absolutely been enjoyable. These guys and gals that have joined the new gold coaching program are just a kick in the pants. They're just, they're absolutely fun to do in a group setting like that. And we talk three times a week. And um, then we talk individually as well. And that it's just fun. So if, you, if you're thinking about a coach, to check out my coaching program and we'll fall forward and um, help you buy houses for profit. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.